the goal here is that people with disabilities are comfortable in a general population shelter and emergency managers and volunteers also understand some of the accommodations that people with disabilities may have coming in. I hope that by participating tonight that um, we will learn a little bit more about what it's like to shelter in a general population shelter and I also hope that for the volunteers that they will have a little bit more exposure to what it's like to work with people with disabilities as they come into shelters. Well, expectation is, is for uh, everybody to get a little bit more knowledgeable about each person's disability and what it takes to really serve and to help them. We learn more, we'll more about like what to do in case of emergency situation arrives, happens unfortunately, happens. Where we might be able to help other people. Help other people out with if they need some help. I felt that the need for attending something like this or participating in something like this would be very, very intriguing. To feel the atmosphere and to understand what might be expected of me and the emergency responders here, what, the, what kind of information they would give us if there was an emergency. We want to know what would happen in case an emergency should have occur. Like, say, for example, it was like, like it was a water flooding in case it had to be a vacant, taken to another location. What would happen in case it was a, like an emergency like, like that? Like Sandy, like, like Sandy what happened, unfortunately, it happened. I had an experience with Hurricane Sandy. I'm on oxygen, and they couldn't put me in a shelter because they were not um, able to accommodate my needs. So they sent me to Robert Wood Johnson instead. And I didn't have to go to an emergency room. I was perfectly fine, but that's how, that's what they, did it, they needed to do. So that's why I'm here, because I think that Things can get better if you use yourself as an example to help for accommodations. A lot of people have been left out of the planning process with all of, of as an afterthought in the process and it's important to be involved from the, from the beginning um, in case a natural or emergency disaster occurs. We're very anxiety ridden that it's really nerve wracking to be outside of your comfort zone, you know, at home. You know, because I'm visually impaired, uh, you know, home is the safest place to be. So to be outside of your home environment, it's just very scary. What happened was the power went out, we had no electricity, and it was cold, you know, and we had to locate somewhere else. Yeah, the power went out, and like in Edison, when we had to say any the power, unfortunately, went out about possibly about and six or seven days. We lots so be repaired the next time. When it be a case like that, any kind of emergency, we got to make sure we have all our equipment, yeah. emergency stuff, because emergency we stuff. never know what's going to happen each day. Yeah. I think it's very hard to simulate a disaster experience when there's not really a disaster occurring, but in the same vein, I think it's a great time when things are calm for us to kind of practice what we would need to do in the event of an emergency, and it's also great for the various volunteers from around the counties to also practice their skills that they've learned in the classroom. This is really what my passion is. It's my first shelter, but working with uh, access and functional needs individuals is really what I'm interested in and trying to help them in any way I can, learning what their needs are and just trying to provide as many of those as I can. It's important for us to have our volunteers out here working with the people that do have the access and functional needs so that we can understand from each other the needs, manage expectations, and just have that good understanding of how to best work together. Our county is actually moving forward to get better, um, I guess, familiar with how access and functional needs are handled in the shelters. In fact, it's part of our initiative to get our grant money from the, uh, the state as far as our shelters, and we felt that this was the best way to go about it by doing a simulation. I would ho hope first and foremost that all the emergency shelter workers and volunteers would recognize that people with disabilities are people, and they should be treated with respect and autonomy, and um, just as any other person that was coming into their shelter without a disability. We are people first. We may need accommodations, but uh, we're just like anybody else. And we're, we're not much different. We just 
treat us like people. It's just nice when people give you information. So as much information as we could be given, you know, verbally, as opposed to being handed a pamphlet and having someone else read it to you, um, is really appreciated. They're gonna learn and understand from me, my with my needs, because not everybody uses oxygen. So they're gonna they're gonna learn. Hopefully, we will all learn together. Somerset OEM has been wonderful in providing the space here and working together with us. We've been working for about five months on this project. I'm hoping after tonight we'll learn some good lessons and that we will have that rapport to be working with one another in the county to, to make things better for everybody as a community.